architecture really starts with people. You know? So I, um, it is about the experience that you uh, generate or you create or you curate um, with people and for people and hopefully by people. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always very interested in ensuring that architecture addresses at least um, that sort of social uh, and perhaps environmental um, aspects of, of, of living. Um, because I think these are fundamentally two of our most important challenges of, of today, the growth of the human population and the changing climatic condition of the environment. So uh, my work is quite embedded in, in those two uh, issues. What's the fascination of water? Why, why, why are you so interested in doing architecture on water with water? Well, I, I think it's um, partly a result of just very basic facts. Um, that we sometimes don't realize that, of course, more than 70% of the surface of the earth is covered by water. And um, that most of the cities that we live in today, the large cities, and we've found out that uh, nearly 70% of those are also covered by, uh, are also located by water. So invariably, the relationship between water and the city um, uh, and water and people um, are um, important. And I think for any, my practice is really looking into this relationship and the fact that with the environment changing, we're going to see a lot more um, uh, a lot more increase in the um, occupation of man and uh, in, in, in areas where there are water settlements. So we're beginning to see these patterns uh, all over the world. Uh, there are occurrences of flooding, there are occurrences um, of uh, sea level rise and I think we're just starting to brace ourselves and uh, learn how to live with water as opposed to uh, fighting it. I mean, there, you know, there, there are challenges. Of course, water is a much more unstable, uh, uh, you know, uh, form to inhabit. Uh, at the same time, you know, it allows. Um, um, a much more fluid uh, ground condition in, the, in technical terms, you know. It's a much more mobile ground condition which um, you can harness, uh, you can, it's a, it's a constantly changing ecological condition, so it has its own life cycle. And um, so on one hand, it's a place where you have to be careful uh, ecologically. Uh, at the other, on the other hand, it's also a place where you can explore the opportunities that it provides because it's, it is really a, a, a habitat where you, know, you can produce uh, uh, other kinds of, you know, there's aquaculture, there's a whole life uh, in water, and there's a whole um, economy around water. Um, but um, I think we're not only invested in um, building on water. It's not about floating architecture. That's really not what my practice is focused on. It's really uh, the relationship between water and the city and water and humans and how that bridge. So we're, we're working even on, uh, we're even looking at edge conditions, not just on water. So our, our second project, for instance, Chikoko Radio, which is also situ which is situated in Port Harcourt in Nigeria, is really a building that straddles the edge of water, the waterfront. So it's a it's more a building that's somewhat half on water and half on land, uh, and it's almost like a bridge that uh, connects those two uh, conditions. Um, it's a platform that um, acts as a space for people. Um, towards the waterfront, a jetty to the 
land area um, a connection essentially. So it really is about this um, edge condition between water and the real city. Uh, we're also working on a project in Chicago now, which is a Chicago lakefront kiosk. And uh, you know, we think it's going to be a fascinating uh, project where uh, currently we're looking at um, ideas of how to both create uh, a key, uh, infrastructure that is shelter, which is essentially what a kiosk is, uh, a vending point, but also to fortify and protect the shoreline, which is uh, a very vulnerable uh, area uh, to the city. So it's always about understanding how to uh, develop the edge condition uh, and water condition and even on land how areas that are flooded you know looking at urban developments there how do you begin to bring water in more create more waterways canals basically allow water to in, be much more integrated into the environment and not constantly you know uh, fight it the architecture should respond to the to the conditions and one of the the, um, one of the things that we also focus on is really learning from the environment. So the environment of Makoko and the materials that we find in Makoko are very different from the ones in Chicago and um, the architecture would be very different. The cultures are there, the social conditions are different, political conditions are different, the environmental conditions are different. You don't have uh, in Makoko, you don't have uh, 20, minus 23 degrees of, uh, uh, of uh, f uh, uh, snow or um, a winter. You know, you don't have high winds as much. You don't, you know, so they are different. In fact, Chicago is a much harsher environment, um, a coastal environment than Makoko is. So it's a much more challenging uh, situation, which we're looking at a much more robust uh, solution um, and for both we are constantly trying to ensure that the solution comes from the environment you know the materials are local uh, you know so they both belong there and at the same time they add uh, to the you know conditions there Having the opportunity to see both worlds and even many worlds uh, I, is, is uh, an incredible source of inspiration. I think I'm most inspired by the environment and I travel a, a whole lot because that's really my source of inspiration, you know. Just being here, looking here um, already influences my thought and how, however subtle. Um, and even though architecture takes a lot from being site specific, it also is something that we completely decontextualized in terms of just being inspired by something different, but you suddenly realize it has a strong influence on something that is um, somewhere else. So in a way, with, my, with architecture, I really, um, my projects, um, I hope and I work to sort of generate solutions that are, that seem like they belong there. At the same time, they look like they came out of nowhere. Um, I think people all ultimately need to be inspired, need to be uh, empowered, need to be uh, sheltered, need to uh, have an environment where they belong, they feel comfortable with and they um, are just motivated by to do the next thing. So um, for students that are um, going to uh, study at the floating school, I, I, I don't imagine it's just about the floating school but it's a whole the school itself is an educational idea about living on water which they have always been doing but now they have a, a platform almost an institution for them to even develop 
that whole idea uh, further.